Hey friends, welcome back to She Seeks Goodness to another episode of Elephant in the Room. Um, if we haven't met, I'm Caitlin and this is Anna. And we're really <laughs> stoked to be digging into a topic today. Um, one which is quite relevant for our society and the world that we live in today. Yeah. And that is cancel culture. Mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we're going there. Yeah, it's a touchy subject, mm. but I feel like, you know, we're up to the task. Yeah. We'll go for it. It'll yeah. be a good time. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Well, let's do it, eh? Yeah. So I think a good starting point, a good first question is yeah. what actually is cancel culture? Yeah, and I think that's like a, it's a pretty heavy loaded question too because I think when we say cancel culture, I think there's a lot of interpretations around like what that means. For others, it's kind of seen as like a way of um, like a choice made by like a group of people to like eliminate people that are like yeah. ruining culture. So like, I don't know, for example, maybe someone says something that's like offensive, offensive like maybe like something racial injustice or – something that doesn't meet the status quo of like morals and then like cutting them out. So it's like, I think it mostly is looked on as like a positive affirmation to like protect culture and protect people. But um, I reckon there's probably like a few underlying things there that probably aren't that helpful. Mm. Yeah. 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 So it's mainly kind of for the purpose of like pushing a like, political issue or political yeah. social justice issue um, yeah that's where we kind of mainly see it play out and in, in the world of social media eh? yeah totally totally I think it definitely like it's something that started politically mm-hmm. where like you'd see someone made like a statement mm-hmm. and like the world doesn't love it so they kind of get all the hate comments maybe they lose their position yeah. and then they kind of get lowered out but I feel like something that started there like it's really kind of dived down mm-hmm. all the levels from like just general social media platforms like influencers or um, your friends that make a post and then people kind of shun them to them and down to like the like more intimate levels of like family and friendships where like I might say something to you and you're like Anna oh my gosh like you're a horrible person Mm -hmm. and then I think because of this cultural like acceptance to shunning people at the big stage I think we shun people like in our own relationships a lot quicker than maybe we would have 10 years ago Mm. yeah yeah and can I start off with a confession there (laughs) I would say that so what you're really talking about is that cancel culture is infiltrated from a societal level into our personal individual lives totally and I've definitely like put myself out thinking um like towards someone like oh you're canceled because of what you said or how you treated so it. So yeah. true. And it's yeah. Like, whoa, 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 hold up. Like, yeah. is that what Jesus would do? Yeah, yeah. You get like triggered. Like, yeah. I feel like because I'm a very opinionated person yeah. about yeah. a range of topics, some that are like high belief, but then others that are just like straight opinion. Like, doesn't it doesn't actually change anything, like from a moral perspective, that like someone might say something. And I feel like, I've heightened in like the ability to be triggered by something because I think offense is like so built up within that we're like we're in a culture that like allows offense to be something that's okay and like it's okay to act on it. So I know for myself, oh gosh, I've had to check myself so many times. Like when you see that friend post that Insta story about something you don't believe in that you're like, I'm so angry. Like, you are crazy. Like, what are you doing? You're so stupid. Or like, you know, you those, those thoughts go there. And I was like, actually, Anna, like, that's not the right way to look at someone. And you're getting so like personal about it when the reality is it's like, you might not like the idea, you might not like their belief, but I shouldn't like, I shouldn't let that change the way I respect a person. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't let that change the way I respond to them, even in like my day-to-day life, how it impacts the way I talk to someone or include someone, I think it's yeah. all encompassing. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. I guess going off that note, um, like the political has become personal. And yeah. that's what we've seen particularly in recent totally. times with COVID. And that has been, you know, a topic of huge mm. political debate. And um, we've seen so much division in society because yeah. people have taken like major political issues Um really personally yeah totally navigated conversation yeah Yeah. um, 
in a really yeah even even way. like moving from like political to I think like from a Christian perspective within faith like there's even controversies within that you know like people with different theological point of views and then like the like you know it is you know it is in scripture to correct and direct like from a pastoral point of view and you know like throughout you know the new testament like the disciples and the apostles were called to correct what was wrong but the manner in which that was done i think is very different sometimes to today where like if i hear something you talk about one like Christian perspective. I think it's even when the church is very much quite a, um, we're more in line to be divisive than to be unified. And I think that's something that we also can look at um, from a church perspective. Yeah. Um, I like the second question here. Um, we've kind of already talked to it, but I feel like we could potentially go like, just that little bit deeper on that personal level as well as like maybe some faith-based um, principles that get neglected. Um, and that is what is cancel culture doing to our society, um, both, I guess, on the large scale as well as the individual. Um, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, as you mentioned, I think we've already touched on that briefly, but mm. like essentially and in a nutshell, cancel culture is – um, I guess encouraging us to act from a space of like hate and pride, like it's kind yeah. of justifying that. Yeah, totally. Um, so it's kind of changing the the heart behind what we're doing mm. there, and people are kind of really maximizing the space of like holding a moral high ground too over people. Yeah, and totally. That's just becoming normalized, and I really um like tapping into other people's wisdom so i just got to yeah. read out a quote here from tim keller as cool. to what he's saying is the impact for our society and he's saying that we are becoming an unforgiving and divisive generation yeah i love that i was do, like just gonna go on that wavelength of like i think as well as the pride um i think i think it stems from pride a lack of unforget like lack of forgiveness because you feel like if I forgive that person, I lose like my mana or like I lose my strength. Um, but I guess the reality is a Christian where we know that actually forgiveness frees you yeah. from the burden of um, the bitterness or greed that actually destroys you. It doesn't actually build strength. But um, yeah, we I think we totally are living in um, a culture that doesn't value forgiveness. Mm. Um, and I think there's many reasons for that. I think one of it is the fact that we're very individualist now. Yeah. And um, because we're an individual, if I don't like you, I can cut you out and that won't impact my life because it's my life only about me in the first place. Versus like, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, even like different um, cultures, it's different too, where community is so prioritized. In the early church, the community was prioritized. So um, if you had a disagreement with someone, you kind of had to solve it because you were living with them. Like they were part of your world. They were part of your life. Like that whole thing of coming together and um, yeah, forgiveness was just so much more important. And I feel like potentially we have lost that with this individual pursuit of like, I believe my truth. I believe my way and I'm not going to accept you if you're out with me because it's all about me yeah. and it sounds really selfish and really hardcore, but like that is true. Like that is actually like the stem, the root of it. Um, and yeah, I think it's really harming us um, as a society and like even as Christians, you know, having to check ourselves and realize like, am I willing to forgive or do I hold on to something more because I, you know, like I prioritize myself more than the grace that God has given me to give to others, you know? So it's it's interesting. So in life, we know that we are going to be confronted with offense and people saying stuff or yeah. just like any issues that we can um, take as being offensive. How yeah. do you reckon that Jesus would invite us to respond in certain situations? Oh, this is like such a tricky one because <laughs> – not that the answer is tricky, but I feel like when we talk about Jesus' response yeah. to handling offensive people or to handling things that he didn't agree with, um, his response is so countercultural yeah. to what I want to do. Mm. So I think it automatically I feel like, dang, this is really difficult. So but also like, all right, it's the journey to go on. Like, let's let's go for it. And um I think Jesus' response can probably be like summarized 
here in Colossians 3.13, and it says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Wow. And what I love about that is because it really, like, when you look at it, you could be offended by so many people. You could offend so many people. Um, the world we're in where there's so many ideas, so many truths, like, it's impossible to avoid offense or to avoid conflict of interest. But it's the ability to, like, step aside from that and look at yourself as a person and see that you are flawed, you have um, brokenness, Mm -hmm. and you um, kind of like if we really look at ourselves, we are pretty unforgivable down to our core, but we get to remember that Jesus forgives us Mm -hmm. and he has grace on us so that we may forgive others. And so I know for myself, whenever I find someone really hard to forgive Mm -hmm. or hard to um, handle their offensive Mm -hmm. remark, I just have to remember that, you know, Jesus forgave me who didn't didn't deserve it and still doesn't deserve it, but he chooses to because he loves Mm -hmm. me and he wants a plan and a purpose for my life that I can also forgive Mm -hmm. others because of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's so perspective centering. And I also love what Matthew 18 has to say about this whole idea of forgiveness too. And, um, you know, just reading from the Bible, it's got some great wisdom and the very words from Jesus himself um, says that I tell you not to forgive just seven times, but 77 times. Yeah, cool. And that's like, whoa, okay, hold up. So forgiveness um, is not just like a one hit event. It's yeah. actually like a, a heart response in a way that we approach our daily lives and during relationships and yeah. doing that well. Um, so I think that's like really convicting to knowing that Jesus didn't just like forgive us once for like one little sin we committed, but like yeah. he's, he's forgiven us um, today, tomorrow and into eternity. Yeah. So yeah. that's just, I, I guess, that. our response as well, right? Yeah. Like his mercies are renewed for us each yeah. day, right? Yeah. And it's beautiful scripture, but mm. it's so countercultural in the day yeah. when we are so quick to give people chances. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to give this person one more chance. And if they blow it, like, that's it. You're cut yeah. off. You're canceled. And, um, yeah, I think that's so natural. I think we have that tendency. And I think we do it way more in life than we think. Like, yeah. we might not necessarily, cut, like, block someone on Facebook or block yeah. someone on Instagram, but we might change the way we talk to them in person yeah. or we might choose to ignore them on the mm-hmm. street. Like it's all goes down to our behaviors and our mm-hmm. thought life. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just not of Jesus and mm-hmm. something that, you know, maybe we need to be humble enough to mm-hmm. admit and then ask for God to, you know, give us grace, give us revelation mm-hmm. of his grace. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. And I guess like looking at like this question mm-hmm. from more of like a, Another form of practicality, you know, we've been kind of addressing how we handle offense through forgiveness by, you know, making that heart decision to actually let go and let God Mm -hmm. and knowing that he had grace for us, we can have grace for others as our strength. But um, going beyond the forgiveness, how do we respond in a culture of offense in terms of like someone offends you, Mm -hmm. um, they say something that's not right. How do we respond to that practically as well as, like, you know, we probably can't just go like, hey, I forgive you because, like, you might lose a friendship over that, you know? Like, they might yeah. be like, oh, right, you hire righteous, you know? Like, that's not exactly how we're called to do it. Mm-hmm. But, like, how can we, yeah, practically provide, um, like, that sense of grace yeah. in our lives? yeah. Well, definitely the I forgive you thing that can add more fuel to the flame (laughs) and I've experienced that myself. Um, But I think I'll just bring it back to just the idea of like we're talking about this topic because there is this mob mentality out in our society right now that, you know, you cancel people if they um, do do wrong and they've harmed you. Yeah. Um, But in terms of like having that conversation with people about – Um, forgiveness and being open to people if they do offend you I think it's really important to to just have like a gentle response a gentle answer in the bible itself actually like there's a verse I think in proverbs that speaks about like a gentle response is actually the wise way to do it yeah and that just helps to de-escalate 
And even though you may feel this burning rage inside of you and mm. just feel like you need to like, you know, say justify everything, yeah, like yeah. that's actually not going to help the situation. It's just yeah, going to so heighten tension mm. and not lead to a productive outcome. Yeah. No, I love that. I love it. Um, there's this like little quote by um, Scott Sauls, mm. and he says that a gentle answer is the answer mm. to offense. And I love that because, I mean, it's not complicated, right? You don't have mm. to think of like really smart words to mm. win your argument, mm. but it's actually just the ability to take that humble step back and be mm. like, my pride isn't like mm. what I'm going to step into yeah. or like I don't have to be right in this situation mm. in mm. order to feel heard or, you yeah. know, seen. Um, I think another thing would probably be like living a life of response that's from a space of truth and grace oh, yeah. where like it it is important, you know, if someone says something and it's not right and it's um, – not the right way that God's chosen us to live mm. and like seeks from us that we, we actually are called as Christians to respond and bring truth into situations mm. yeah. and not be afraid. But um, how we do that's important by like gracing it mm. and um, um, ensuring that um, we listen, you know, actually understand where someone comes from and um, having empathy towards mm their heart because people come to their like answers because of an experience or because of how they see things and Mm -hmm. ultimately where they are in their heart Mm -hmm. so having that empathy to address it but um yeah that's great is there anything Mm -hmm. else you can think of there I feel like that's pretty cool yeah I think that covers it um yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. But, yeah, just, I guess, remembering, you know, mm-hmm. that Jesus is the way and he's modeled how yeah. to do relationships well and that we can look to the Bible for wisdom and guidance on a daily basis when it comes to this because it's yeah. something that we're daily learning and we're going to have to continue yeah. to learn. Um, but yeah. just being grateful for God and his grace in that process too. Yeah. That really helps. Yeah, and encouragement, right? Like we all know we're going to be offended at some point of our mm. lives mm. and knowing that just because we're offended, that's not necessarily – a problem it's Mm. how we respond Mm. and like learning to have the grace of Jesus and trying to outwork that in our lives and I really do believe like that will change culture Mm. like if you show grace to someone who's expecting a cancellation Mm. there's automatically like a step in to share the good news and share the gospel because they're realizing like you care about them yeah you know you actually care about them as a person and the problem is a problem but the person is a person that God has chosen and that God loves Mm -hmm. and I feel like yeah it just opens that door and so I'm really excited to see you know how we as a Christian generation a young generation woman can actually change culture Mm -hmm. by being the grace being the truth and having those gentle answers in moment of conflict Mm. Whether that's in your family, on your social media, in your mm. friend group, mm. or even on a political platform, you know. So it's exciting to see where things will take mm. us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this has been like a real important conversation to have. Mm. And it's something that we'll just continue to work on and yeah. um, apply to our own lives going yeah. forward. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And um, we will tune in again soon. So, yeah. Have a great rest of your day. (laughs)